Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Coney, your art sherpa, and today we're going to be painting a little boy in a moon. You moon? <laughs> <gasps> so, right there. That's what we're doing. Let me, this way. Nope. That, that way. way. That way. So, yeah, I always like picture in picture, like I have no idea where to point. Uh, this is live, can you tell now? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be live streaming this, but it'll be up for replay if you want to take the class later. And if you're here for the replay, hi, welcome to... Um, so I'm going to go through this process step by step. Now, if you look down in the description, there's a link to the website and you definitely want to go there. Um, we're starting out with our project all painted in. I'll go in over a little bit about that, but there's step by step instructions on the website for that part of the process. So I'm not asking you to guess, plus there's the traceable, plus some downloadables and some references. So it's a really good resource for you if this is an important painting for you to do. And my whole goal my whole purpose is to help you paint it. If you're nervous about being able to do it, I promise you, you can do better than you probably think right now. And every painting is its own little gem. They build up on others. And it's like my goal to help you have some type of art breakthrough today. On the mic is John. Hi, guys. Sometimes called Stunt Hands. He's my husband and he's also my co-host and he controls all the cameras and technology. The purpose of that is so that our robotic cameras can zoom in to the painting action you can really see the brushwork or we can switch cameras you can see the mixes and you're not being left out of any part of the process sometimes when you're a beginner maybe you have a few skills and you can get something done but the stuff that's out there leaves you out of a huge amount of the creative process this isn't going to do that this is going to be every part of it we are a little fun we are a little chatty i'm just gonna warn you now because hmm. <laughs> you know we like to have fun and i think this is a saturday uh yes Woohoo! saturday but whatever day it is you know i cheer that too when you come on us let's just jump on it okay ah cool. yes so here we go put these beautiful little works a bit to the side they're so cool all right so right here what i have now in this particular case i did a 10 by 10 stretch canvas on wide stretcher bars and i painted the whole surface of it black I then put in a grid and I made a line every two inches in kids chalk, which is this stuff, right? Just what you see like on chalkboards. It just kind of sketches out like that. I also put in a divide at the five inch and five inch mark to give myself a canvas center area. And using my grid, I simply follow along what I see in each square. So if there's a bit of a hat peeking out in the square, then all I draw is that part that I see. I try to make sure that the lines enter and exit where I see them in the grid. Now this, with the measurements, you can really see what's going on, is on the website. So that's what we did to sort of start this out. Couple of things that I'm gonna talk about, right? Which is, I always like to do these sketches. If you're wondering what exactly this is, uh, this is Quran de Osh abuse is what this is. This is a super <laughs> color too, watercolor pencil. These are the best watercolor pencils. Um, I would recommend using maybe a less expensive one and saving these now, for your fun multimedia projects. But I, if, being if the I, rebel that I am. If I can say, hmm. the reason why that blue looks so beautiful and vivid and bright against that black surface is because it's a Quran to Osh watercolor yeah. pencil. Yeah. It's And I need to do that awesome. for you guys so you can see the line. It gives me a chance to let you guys see the line. But in my own studio, I might have used something a little more disposable and saved my little Quran to Osh treasures for yummy bits of multimedia watercolor fun. But if you're wondering at home why that pencil got such a yummy, yummy line and yours may not be. <laughs> that would be why. That's why. So we're going to put our paint today. We're going to be painting with heavy bodied acrylic paint. And I just want to talk about something because I see this comment brought up a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, which is people go from craft paint into professional heavy body paint and they're not having the result that they're hoping for. And I would like to explain why. Okay. So heavy body paint needs to be modified a lot to be like crab, cra uh, <laughs> craft paint. It needs to be modified a lot to be uh, like craft paint, to thin it out, to make it flow, to make it level. If you like craft paint, but you want to upgrade your paint, do one of the fluids, right? If you're painting with this, but you want to move into a professional paint, move to that. These are the same. These are not the same. 
And I think that that's where some of the confusion has been coming from. I hope you don't mind me, you know, sort of diverting some of our attention to that public service announcement. No, perfect. That I have a Facebook group and people post questions in there all the time. And I'm always looking at those trying to think, how could I answer that question? I'll tell you all the colors I'm going to be using in just a half second here. I'm using all professional level paints, but not necessarily all the same brand of paint. That's okay. That is super okay. And honestly, I could mix craft paint and heavy body paint. All the acrylic formulas will work together. So it's a weird thing, like you might not know, you can use an acrylic ink to thin a heavy bodied acrylic. We should say that's in it, it's most... really cool stuff. It's that it's that friendly and worky worky. Yeah. Especially if you're in the same brand. Yeah. That's generally they'll even tell you like, hey, this is what you can do. Like Golden's really good about having like what percentages you can mix. Cause but if... across like like an acrylic ink to a heavy body paint, you can just do whatever. Mm -hmm. because both of them have the polymer in it. You're not yep. breaking it down with water. So that's an interesting thing. You can also use airbrush medium. If you're into paint pouring, let your ears perk up on that. <laughs> now, would you call what we consider craft paint to be a student body fluid paint? A student <sighs> fluid body paint. That, you know what I'm saying? So, weirdly, no. Hmm. Okay. Weirdly, no. It has some things in common with student paint in that sometimes the pigment loads are lower, there's color shift, and uh, it has less mixability in some of the lines. But craft paint is a very highly engineered for a specific purpose product. So if you're painting on terracotta, there's a gorgeous craft paint that does that. There's, I, I guess I just want to say there's a little more engineering in craft paint <laughs> that it maybe we give it credit for. But it's for specific jobs. But if you're just talking about the color vibrancy, the pigment loads uh, between, say, a craft paint and a fluid acrylic paint at a professional level, the fluid acrylic paint in a professional level will win. But if you're talking about a product that is designed to paint on a specific weird surface or to, you know, they've got specific for fabrics and it's for terracotta and they've got those for glass and those for baking, um, usually with professional acrylic paints, you wouldn't do a lot of that stuff. There's some mediums that can modify it to get it to do that, but it's not organically designed for that. So it's like Mod Podge. Not a great varnish. Fantastic product, though. Okay. Right? Does another, that make I'll, sense? Yeah, you, you go through here, and then I'll ask another question in a minute. All right. I'm just putting out my paint. But I love answering questions, and we, we saved a little time gritting in the mood ahead of time. So this gets everybody a chance to kind of catch up if they didn't get the notices in group or in the chat here to pre-paint some of this. Mm. I do try to put those notices out. So if you're painting with me live, be sure you're in the group so you can see those little, little tidbit warnings. All right. So, so far, what I have is Bird Sienna, Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Mars Black, Quinacridone Magenta, Yellow Ochre, Docks Purple, Cad Yellow, Titanium White. And the last one I'm going to throw out is some Prussian Blue. Ooh, so... I want John to kind of zoom into that. Okay, hold on a second. Do, 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 do. Okay. So there's some separation there where you see that bubble. Okay. That is where the polymer has separated from the pigment. That is not, it's like not ideal, but it can happen through different storage circumstances or milling circumstances. You really can't tell. But what you want to avoid is cottage cheese. So you can use it if it's like that, but I would return it if it's cottage cheese. That's just a question I get asked a lot, so I thought I'd answer it while I was here. Huh. So that's that amount of stuff seems okay. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. That amount of stuff is really, really okay. Now, I'm going to grab me. Let's see. Today, let's pull out our number 10 Cambridge. So this is a bright, and it's a mix of bristles and synthetic filaments, so it doesn't get too waterlogged. I'm going to go ahead and load this up. Right with a uh, with a little bit of water, but I'm gonna drag off the extra. I'm gonna come in here. Maybe I'm gonna put out my tint, my zinc white. Right. Also, let's get our zinc white out. That's in our little material description, and we may like that a little bit better for this technique. If you don't have it, just use the titanium white that you have, and be lighter with the technique, or thin it with glazing medium. Either is fine. So I'm gonna load up with the tinting white, like you do. And I'm going to get just a smidge of the Prussian in there. 
And I'm going to come along here. And I'm going to begin to just talk about some of this low fog cover. I'll get a little more of my pression in there. And you can Maybe. see that it goes around here. If you're painting um, a nice gallery wrap, you can paint around the side, and that's a nice thing that you can do. As I am towards the bottom, I will go ahead and level out this blue. You see it's kind of curving up here. Uh-huh. But then it levels out right here a bit. The fog reasons settles down. And... Reasons, reasons, reasons. Now, while I'm here, I don't really need all this extra grid. So I'm just going to take a clean brush and remove it. As you do. Sometimes do. <laughs> yeah. Remove the extra grid. Because it's super not necessary here. Oh, and let's, while we're thinking about it, put a wish on here that everybody today watching this has a very happy day. Yeah, that's Sometimes a good wish. Sometimes those are more valuable than we give them credit for. <laughs> happy days, a rare and precious commodity in the world. But let's all have some more of those. So when you paint that in, that'll go into the, the world. You can see that erases fairly easily. Now, I can, as I'm going up, I can take a little bit of my phthalo blue and my uh, Mars black and a tint, see, just a tint of my tinting white or zinc white, whichever I'm using. And I'm going to come back with this color into these wonderful little kind of cloud spaces. Can you see that? Yeah. And I'll go ahead and kind of work this lightly around. So it's just a dusting of color. because We're trying to create an atmosphere. I might put some of this around here, as you do, if you want to, if you're painting that. I do a lot of canvas boards, so if you're painting with a canvas board, that's okay. You can do this in any square size, and on the website, I gave you a link to a place that'll help you resize easily. So, ha 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 ha. I'm helpful like that. Mm -hmm. You see me just going around the moon? It's kind of creating a dusting. The dark blue is almost the same value. That's the lighter darkness of the black. Oh, oh, you're over the moon. I'm over the moon for this painting. Woo! Right? And so we're still keeping it a little bit dark, but we're letting that little glow happen. Now, I've got my blue and a little bit of my black again. And I'm going to get a stronger amount of my tinting white, my zinc white. I'm going to come around my little moon shape just a bit. I'll get on the maybe the corner of my brush Yep. because I'm trying to create soft, kind of simple, not too obvious lines. I'm not trying to make patterns. I'm just trying to create a little smoky atmosphere, as you do. They are getting just an implication of that. Mm-hmm. Super fun stuff. And even bring a little bit of that there. I'm going to take my brush and into a towel, kind of squeeze out maybe some of the pigment. I'm going to go back into my tinting white. But can you see even with it squeezed out, there's still quite a lot? And I'm going to make sure that I come back and Create some of these little high up clouds. Maybe they're even, this little smoke effect is a little bit here, right? Yeah. So this lets me sort of do that. I will definitely dust this down this way as well. We've got those two values, which is really great. I'm going to make sure that I don't do what I always tease my mom for doing. <laughs> Not paint the bottom. <laughs> Because I do, guys. I, t I tease her relentlessly for this habit. So now that I've done that, I got to not do it. <laughs> yeah, paint that. I do. It put me in a position. So be careful when you comment on any other artist's work because then it might commit you to something that you're not that into doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But you got to paint it. Because you got you to gotta get it in. Now, one thing that we can do at this stage, and I'll see if I have enough fluid white. I can put a little of my fluid white out. As you do. 
and we're going to make some stars. We are. And of course, like what's not here today? The dotting tool is cleaned and put where? There it is. Aha, the dotting tool. So in my Galaxy set, I have a, a set of tools for splatter and spray and stars and things like that. It's called the Galaxy set. Comes this awesome little double nail tool. It um, is pretty great and it makes light work. You know, I wish I had this. like, I wish I had like some B-roll when you said that, that I could play that, you know, like all game show styles like da 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 and here's the Sherpa style tools that you can use. But we don't so, have time for that. I'm just making dots. You can always turn, you can do this with a toothpick, um, or a sharpened pencil if you have to, uh, back of your brush. So don't panic and stop painting because you don't have that set yet. Just, you know, check it out if it's something you find you're doing a lot of stars or a lot of mist, spray, splatter of any kind. It could be something you would like to have in your art box for sure. Now, the cool thing about this is it has a little ball tip that consistently drops little blobs of paint and makes the perfect little dot. Which it is really does. Why it's called a dotting tool, which is cool. It is super cool. Especially I believe. You know what I saw that I forgot to paint around his little foot? Silly me. I was going to say that dotting tool is great for like this mandala dotting. Oh, yes. Super. So, I'm just catching that I needed to bring this over a little bit further. I think your phone is beeping. It is. And it's on airplane mode. So I don't know what it is, but I was going to take step by steps. <laughs> well, I, you know, it helps everybody. No, it's good. I just think it's funny that it's beeping. But it's in airplane mode. I didn't know it could beep in airplane mode. Well, I apparently you're in some kind of mode that is airplane mode, but isn't. It's it's tricking you mode. It's tricking me mode. Tricking I the agree Sherpa with that. mode. All right, tricking the sh don't trick the Sherpa. I'm just making sure that those strokes have something there. Now, since my phone is beeping and and bugging us, right? I may go ahead and then just take advantage of the fact that I'm gonna do a step by step of this. I should get you a camera so you could just. You know, you are always about putting me into some technology that's super challenging to use that isn't just point click. Well, you know, that way I'm not like live showing everyone what your unlock code is. Okay, that's true. Or I could just uh, like keep it unlocked and then it, I wouldn't have to do that again. So that's what I'm doing, guys. I'm getting a picture of a step there. John, <laughs> if you can just show them that step so they can just zoom in on that so they know where they're at. This okay. is the first stopping point. You want to get to here. That's your first stopping point. I'm going to start talking about that more because I think understanding where those layers are. I think it's awesome. What? I think it's awesome. Who is that? Stop messaging me. No, just kidding. <laughs> now, now all your friends are going to be like, ha ha. Sure. Actually, I've shut down most notifications. So this is probably only two things. Only because I can't find how to shut them down. Some things don't make it easy to shut down your notifications. And then I've turned them all off on my phone. So I don't know why I'm getting any. Hmm. I opted into something I shouldn't have. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> Skype. As you do. <laughs> so here I have my wonderful little moon that I've done a glow around, right? And I want to kind of get that sense of glowing. I'm just going to make sure that this is a deep glow. If I can. So I've really just dusted off most of the pigment. So this is just such a light dusting of pigment. I, I love light dustings of pigment. See them? Let's find them and get them. No, don't. I, <laughs> All right, I'm looking now. I think it's Skype. Oh, that's what it is. Mm. You should open the little door on the side of your hatch uh -huh. and then switch the flip. Let's stop then. It will make it on vibrate mode so it shall not make noise. Okay. Well, then there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, da, 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 da. It's okay. You should paint something. Display and brightness. No, I'm t I'm turning off the thing. Oh. Auto lock. No more auto lock, dude. <laughs> no, it's on some mode. It's going to auto lock on me. Tech support channel. <laughs> All it is is showing that I, too, the mighty Sherpa, <laughs> also am laid low by tech, tech just like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Even live. So I'm going to take a little of my green into my blue. 
Just this is going to take it a bit into the aqua as you might like. Right. And then interestingly enough, I'm going to still pull a little bit of black into that. Right, because we're doing this moon, but I just wanted it to be a little bit different than what was around it. And I'm going to wipe off the extra pigment like I've been doing. This time I'm going to go right into my titanium white. I like titanium white because it's a very bright white pigment. It really is. It's powerful. It's super powerful. And it's good for moons. And you can see how much more it covers compared to the zinc. And there's our wonderful wish that everybody has a happy day going out there. Now, this brush is great for covering large areas and creating uh, expressive sort of rough stuff. But I'll have to, if I want a really sharp edge, I have to use a like a specialized bright for that where the filaments are not so fluffy. Ooh, you know, was, fluffy filaments. Was this canvas black to start with or did you paint it that way? No. Yeah, we um, I painted it that way. We've got some instructions about those first things. So if you're ever painting with me live, you're definitely going to want to go by and be in the Facebook group and check the video page on the website. Because I'll tell you if you've got to do something black, I will do a step by step of the grid if we're doing a grid and I'm not demoing that exactly. Um, that's where that info will be, but it will be there for you, especially going forward. Old videos, I have no guarantee on what's going to be there because I didn't know what I was doing. We're going to work on it. But now <laughs> we can. I got that stuff for you. So I'm bringing this over to my little mix as I come to the back side because it gets a little darker over here. The dark side of the moon. Circles, my nemesis. Well, technically, you can't paint the dark side of the moon from our perspective. Because it's on the other side. Does anyone else have an astronomer in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Guilty as charged. I was just thinking. Train, train fans and astronomers. The bane of all artists. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not Except a constellation. Except for Tyson DeGrasse, who's like, this is great. You captured the feeling of stars. He's the one I like because he understands what we're doing. It's, yeah. it's the feeling. It's, it's never. No, no, no. Those need to be closer together to catch Orion's belt. Right. No, he doesn't do that. But a lot of them do. Train people and star people. Train people are like, it needs two more wheels in the front. Something, yeah. I just And it's always something like, really? Was it that important? Like, we can't just take in, no, oh, must have it. Like, all right. It's almost as bad as, like, you know, uh, calling a Mini or a Porsche or a Ferrari a Lamborghini. Those guys get pretty serious about their stuff too <laughs> yeah they do <laughs> or babies don't be putting no ford emblem on the front of my chevy so i'm just carrying that around just to making sure i've got a nice round fill mm -hmm. so the grid does help me freehand a nice roundish moon in so now we've got a little moon happening right it is yeah rinse out your brush a bit right and we're going to come and get more white into it, shall we? Shall we? Yeah. And all around here, I'm going to just lighten this up with this very fun brushy stroke. I'm going to begin to talk a bit about these little darker patches that can happen in the moon. Because it's fun to paint, isn't it? Mm. The moon is fun to paint, in my opinion. And what you want to do is you definitely want to create some contrast that works with what you're seeing. And apparently what I want to do is not switch brushes for a really long time. Ah. <laughs> so I'm still on a number 10 Cambridge just because I can mean it's doing a fast work of a lot of area. And I like its brushy, breathy nature. You can see I'm pulling more white onto my brush. And another thing, try to pay attention, like when I'm managing my paint, where do I come in? I come in from the side. You don't see me go into the center a lot. If you put out too much paint, if you come into the center, it can make the process of keeping your palette tidy almost impossible. And that'll happen to me too if I put out too much paint or 
I work from the center of my paint pot. Let me make sure I'm outside of here. Ugh. So it's funny. Uh, it's, uh, this I have is... to work so close on my process that I crawl up my ferrule. And I got to remember to back out. This is definitely the feeling of a moon. What do you mean? Um, well. It's a, it's, I, I have, like, I have actual, like, landscape happening here. You definitely have some, some mares and some, like, craters and some stuffs. I feel like that's judgy. Do y'all feel like that's, that's judgy? judgy. <laughs> I'm just saying you got all the right parts, maybe not all the right places. It is literally the right places. <laughs> Because I didn't want to deal with this. I'm going to get into my, my, my tinting white now, y'all. So you see my pain? <laughs> it's awesome. It's like saying, no, the Grand Canyon was on um, Hawaii. It is not like that. And I am, so someone tell him that I am copying the actual. Oh, no, uh, the picture is wrong too. What? How could the picture be wrong? It's a photograph of the actual moon. It's not a digital sketch. Is it? Yes. It's been You're edited. Wrong. It's been <laughs> Well, so no, it's been edited. Because, no. Well, I, I I'll have to take a look closer look at it because normally there's more darker spots on the left side of the moon. You know what I mean? All right. I disbelieve you, but so I'm getting some darker values. For my moon critic over here. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not critical of the moon. I love the moon. I, w I was just saying I want more paintings of the moon. I enjoy them immensely. All heckling aside. <laughs> but it's like saying, you know, those are the semblance of thin pants instead of saying you look thin in those pants. <laughs> what? I don't <laughs> we have to say that again because I didn't catch that. <laughs> I think all the girls were like laughing. It's like, we, how do I look at these pants? Those are the, that's the feeling of thin pants. <laughs> no. those, those give the feeling of thin pants. That's a real commentary. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's not it at all. That's what you do. Men. <laughs> uh I'm just going to come here and darken this, too. And we're just having a nice, delightful Saturday paint. See me wiggling? Where am I working this brush? I'm working this along the corner. How many hoots is this? Uh, I call it a three hoot because we have a figure in it and because I thought we'd do a little more. I've been getting requests to just paint the moon in a slightly more serious fashion. Slightly. You know, from those moon critics. <laughs> <laughs> slightly more serious. I'm just like, moonish. Hey, I didn't blow a hole and didn't put a star there. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Which you, is like my favorite thing to do. You, you give it give it a bullet in the eye and make it wink at you. <laughs> I didn't do that. Oh, it's pretty good too. Sometimes I like that. I do that. I like that moon too. So I'm just trying to, you know, cover some of that. Every once in a while I will pull this out. Right? And I'm going to really dry it off. And perhaps get a little more into the tinting white so that I can run that through. See, I'm just wiggling that through. Creating these soft transitions. I won't lie, the brush helps a bit because it's sort of fluffy. So it lends itself to fluffinating. You know, that you need fluffinating. Yeah. So I'm just going to tap some little light spots here and there. Because moons have those. Even in the little dark areas. And certainly it comes down here a bit. From the photograph. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to switch brushes a bit right now so that I can. Oh, that's looking really rather nice. I'm going to go like ahead and get into a ruby satin. Number six bright. And I come back with, see how I'm getting right into the white there? Yeah. Let's come in and give our moon a nice edge. If you have any questions about how to handle moon critics? <laughs> you can just send them right over to NASA where they have photos of the moon. NASA loves me. I have confirmation. 
They don't share your moon criticisms. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Degrassi Tyson agrees with you. I really doubt Mr. Degrassi Tyson watches the show. No, but I'm just saying I think he's all busy solving the mysteries of the universe and making TV shows to explain those mysteries to us common folk. It is true. I think he was the only person that after Carl Sagan I could have seen on that show. That's so true. I'm taking this much lighter paint and this firm brush, as you can see, and coming back in and making this brighter space. Can you guys see that? I can see it. I'm brushing this in lightly. My pressure isn't very hard, and I'm leaving all the values that I kind of have around here sort of still around here. Not pressing, not pressing. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this nonsense. What so, you going to do? Take this, and I'm going to put a dot there. A dot in front. A dot of, there. Oh, my gosh. The stars are shining through the moon. No, they're not, but there are these weird little crater marks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that I'm going to start talking about. So when I have those in, right, I'm not just using my dotting tool. I'm going to get a small brush, and I'm going to get it wet. And before it dries, I'm going to just kind of blend them out like little crater Oh, nice. Marks. Some little meteor craters just poosh. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Yeah. Moon critics. Just and those silenced. Are, and we know that those are geologically accurate because, I mean, like the moon is covered in craters. So those could be just any particular five that are shiny tonight. That's right. That are on this picture. <laughs> that are showing up tonight in, in the Sherpa's picture. In the Sherpa's so he's picture. trying to get loyal, but we all know. <laughs> <laughs> I went and got some more paint if I need to, like, you know. Maybe talk a little bit about some of these being brighter. Even here on the white, it's nice to do these little spots that could be here. Right? And then I'm going to come back with the brush and a little bit of paint, and I'm going to dot in the center of these a bit because they do have, like, that sort of hotter dot in the center. Like the crater lip gets lit. Yeah. And I'm going to just tap that down. Tapping, see me tapping the brush up and down to smooth it out. Tapping Man. it up and down to smooth it out. Y'all are just like. That's cool. It's like an impasto crater. We're painting moon today. I like it. Impasto craters. I think they're cool. Impasto craters. It's like, it's like you're trying to be complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put one right here. <laughs> you're trying. But you're not succeeding. <laughs> No, that is really great. Oh, I'm really. I'm gonna get across the room and kind of look at that. You guys do the same. Okay. Well, we. <laughs> I guess I could look. I could look. I mean, it would just see the top of your head. So I'm seeing that there's this dark spot that I definitely want to tap down. Yeah. I want to. I want to make it a little less. You know, and, and what it is. So I'm gonna come back with a little do, do, of do, the do. zinc. You can do a lot to handle these like little dark spots. If you use the zinc, I think it's pretty okay moon. What do you think, John? Moon I critic, think it's pretty okay moon too. <laughs> okay, there, moon critic is with us. <laughs> Who's pain? I'm a pain. Hmm. Yep, that's what's happening. So now I'm gonna make just a regular kind of black and white gray. Right, just a regular black and white gray. And I'm going to paint the ledge he is sitting on. Now, I simplified this from the photograph because I felt the ledge that was there was just going to be problematic in perspective. It wasn't really perfectly in perspective as it was. And with perspective, you've either got to do it or not do it. Huh. I'll just come around here and sort of paint my thing around there. As you do, I might come down and underneath this, as this comes in, I might do a darker gray. All right? It's gray, but it's a darker gray. And then I can lighten it back up again. No. 
for this right here. On a scale of 1 to 50, which gray is this? This, it, on a scale, how about, like, we don't do 50 <laughs> shades of gray, because that's crazy. <laughs> can't even just... see it. And also, I don't think that lady researched that book correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like... I don't know. I can't it's too speak easy. from experience, but I disbelieve the research. I believe the dinosaur stuff on Amazon more. I was I, I'm just a pop culture nerd. It was too easy. It it was too easy. You know it was like really okay. So anyways, in the level of gray, um if black is a 10, 9 and 8. Okay. Right? So so 9 8 gets a little bit all uh, like 7 and a half and then back down into an 8. This is an interesting question, too. Angie would like to know, could you slow down the drying time with mixing white? Uh, no, but you can slow down the drying time with golden open white. Okay, so uh, mixing white doesn't slow down the drying time at all. It's just a very transparent white that is got a low tinting strength, so you can lighten something a shade without changing its intrinsic nature. Gotcha. I'm just painting the bottom here. Just so it, it, trim, hang trim, it up trim. high enough to see the bottom. You're not all annoyed, <laughs> which you can be. You got to avoid the noid. You got to avoid the noid. Oh, wow. We went there. It just. Oh, I was going to say, like, for the Fifty Shades of Grey, the weirdest thing ever is the book had come out, right? Everybody was talking about it. It was all the husbands that were at the school where my daughter went bragging that their wife had read that book. As if it was somehow going to improve their life in any way. <laughs> but when you read the book, you realize, dude, this book is not about you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole other thing. Do you really want to create a contract? <laughs> you know, I... I'm actually... amused by little things in life, so the small things just make me laugh. I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight along here. I'm going to make a lighter gray. So now we're about at a six. And I'm going to come right here. Maybe I'll take it to a five. See how I'm doing? There we go. That's all I'm saying. All I'm going to say about that whole thing. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> okay. Now, sips yes. of my coffee and questions. Oh, that's looking really good. And let me take a step. I'm going to get out of the way so you can't right. see it. And I'm going to take a step because now we've gotten the next thing. So this would be your next place that you want to get to. Right? That's the next place you're trying to get to. You've got your moon in. You've got your square in. And now we're down to the figure. Hopefully these steps help. Okay, uh, any questions? Oh, let's see. I'm sure they're... Uh, do, 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 do. No. Oh, this is an interesting challenge. Betty would like to know if uh, you could make a beautiful painting with uh, dollar store products. That's an interesting thing to question. Can you? The answer always in art is yes. Can you do a thing in art? Yes. I'm a, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> Artists are people general. who are yes. You <laughs> will, however, have many, 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 many challenges to making a great product with it. Could it be done? Sure. You're going to have to do a lot to make it archival. There's just a lot there, but I... Check Facebook. We'll talk about this. Yeah, check Facebook. And here's the thing, too. Like, you can paint with coffee and blueberry juice. Blueberry juice being very non-permanent, you got to get a photograph right away. But it has been done well. And it is definitely not made for artists. And there are many, many challenges. <laughs> so if you think of it like that, the art's in you. And you can make it work with anything if you've got to make it work, including the dirt. What is that artist dirt on the back of a car? Yep. Okay. So we're going to start putting in his shirt and his skin tones and his hat and all the stuff. Let's talk skin tones. Let's be very simple about skin tones. Let's just make a nice master skin tone recipe, which is going to be yellow ochre and a bit of our quinacridone, right? Okay. That's nice. That's good. We like that. And let's get a bunch of the white into it. And I may even, for the purposes of having it last a half second, put out a little bit of glazing medium into it to slow down the drying time. Not any glazing medium. Most of them speed up drying time. 
but this one is also a retarder and extender. Interesting. So you get a you get a half second more than you expect. But there you go. There's the mid range of the skin tone. Middle. All right. So I'll come here to our little face area and pull this in. Now I know I'm going to be putting a shadow at the back of the neck, but let's just get this in at first, right? And I'm rounding because kids are a little bit pedgy. Mm. And I want to make sure that I don't lose that. Otherwise, they get to looking a little older. I'm not going to get into it. Ooh, got a little bit of the brown in there. Not going to get into the hand too much yet. I just want to cover what I've got going on in my arm. Pull this up. So there's this sort of paddle I like to do for a hand, and that's my beginning. And then I just deal with whatever I got to want to do with my fingers. And we're going to change this a little bit because our, our, our friend is here at night. Right? So I'm going to draw on the... I, sometimes if I have a brush like this and I want to draw with it a bit, I just start to work the corner. That's how I get away with that. As I work the corner. <laughs> or I switch to a round. Whatever I think will, will get me through. You know, sometimes you're just trying to. Get the gist in. And I'm just trying to get the gist in right now. Hmm, I got a foot. And I got something like a hand. Yeah. I can always come back with my uh, tinting white, my zinc white, and trim anything I got to trim. Okay? Yeah. So if any of it gets away from me, see how easily I can fix that? I am not including the city, and the reason is, is that I wanted this to be a little bit more of a fairy tale. That is why I elected to do that, but I couldn't find a reference that was leaving the streets out, and I really didn't want, I just wanted this moon focus and the little boy, and that's where I wanted my focus to be. All right. I'm also going to come here and just get a little bit of my background moon color, as you do. All right. So many background moon colors. And I'm going to make sure that it's well seated under the hand of the boy. So I might even turn this a bit. And take this under the hand and up close to the knee just to make sure that our stuff is crisp. You want it to be crisp, don't you? I do. You know why I want it to be crisp? Why? So that new people joining us, like Fenny, all the way from the Netherlands, is going to. She's thinking about picking up the brush for the first time. I just want to give her that little bit of, you should do it. You should do it. She's been watching it for a while. You and could just do it. as, you know, and. Yeah, you it takes that? a minute. Sometimes it's like, uh, you know, like that, that wonderful kind of swimming hole everybody goes to. Let's assume it's a safe swimming hole with no risks. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is our, this is a completely vetted swimming hole with no trash or cars and it was never dumping ground. And there's this great rock jump and there's no rocks underneath it. But sometimes even though you know it's safe in the water and your friends are all jumping and swimming, you question it at that top. But when you do jump, are you ever sorry? Mm. Well, maybe you are, but I wasn't, and I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> hey, welcome to another weird Sherpa analogy. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. That's right. So he's got kind of brown pants, so I'm going to start with a little black and brown. You know, as Sandra pointed out, if you were needing to work on both skin tones and moons, this is the perfect intersection of those two things. This is. This is like skin tone moon lesson. Perfect. You, with a little bit of sky dots thrown in. With sky dots thrown in. I mean, stars. Sky, you know. <laughs> Whatever, right? We won't be 
critical of your sky dots. We won't. We will be understanding of your sky. We won't even put stars in parentheses. All right. I'm going to come into the back and I'm gonna raise these pants a bit because there's sort of these suspenders here that I do like. You know, I'm going to go ahead and maybe put in a little bit of that background right here in this corner, even though I know I'm going to paint a lot of things really over it, just in case it's peeking out anywhere. Um, hey, that, that was pretty cool. So in this, this far leg is bent and across coming in, and there was like two half toes showing. But something I know about art is that there's no way you're going to paint those two weird half toes. Like, well, there is a way, but it's just not a beginner way. So it's just easier to say the foot is then just tucked against the other leg all the way instead of up with two, two strange toes sticking out. Because otherwise right. you're going to be like, I can't get these toes. Like, there's three people that are going to get the toes, but the rest of them be like, I don't know. It was great till that weird foot. Mm. So let's, in our imaginations, just know that the foot is bent, and this time instead of two toes, it's all the way right there, resting against his leg. We all sit like that. We've got kids. We know it's a thing. I'm going to mm. put another layer of the skin tone in. On the top here. Notice I'm not taking it all the way down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, little feet. Right? Mm hmm Fat little feet. So we've got that in. What I want to do to help bring the skin tone into nighttime. I'm going to take a little bit of my Prussian into my skin tone. And it's going to be back here at the neck. A little bit under the hat. Definitely back here at the neck. If I need to, I can even get so far as getting a little black into that. Just back here at that neck. Because we've got a little shading there. And we've got to put the hat a little bit lower. But we're now starting to get it. Right? And we're going to get a little bit more of that in there. Brush it. Go figure. And right here, where I know I'm going to have an ear, I'm going to bring down that little shadow. Let's take this nice little shadow skin tone underneath the arm here. So it still feels like skin tone, but now it's skin tone at night. Bring it halfway up the palm. And let's come under the pant leg with it a bit and around the back of the calf. And definitely pretty strongly under the foot. Now we're going to get in the hat and the shirt. The shirt is a little bit of our yellow ochre and our black mixed together. Sometimes it's nice to even pop a brown in it. What you're making is sort of like a prairie off-white. And then come right there. See that value? Yeah. That's what we're going for. And we'll get the darkest value of it first. There we go. That gets that undertone in. Getting our first undertone in. And isn't it starting to come in? It's like our girls in the flowers or a little boy fishing. It just comes in. Oh.
Yeah. I like it. That's coming yeah. in. The... So now we kind of got something happening here, right? Yeah, it looks like a little kid sitting on a roof. That's all. That's what we doing. Little kid sitting on the roof. How fun is that? There's a lot of French conversation happening. French and conversation Jack, happening. They're, they're, there's folks who say they're from France. They. I come from France. They're here. Bonjour, ça va bien? They are here. Same. All right. So, wish they had translation. wait, what time is it there? It might be Bonsoir. I don't know. I have, I have to Google it. I'm going to take a step-by-step -step picture, you guys, if you have. Well, actually, no, let me get the hat in. Get the hat in. Get the hat in, and then we will step by step because that's a better stopping place. But they were saying how nice it'd be to have a live translation. Oh, that would be amazing! And if anybody ever would like to come in and do that, uh, we would support you uh, to to give you the modding wrench so that you wouldn't get timed out on your chat. <laughs> but if you wanted to come in live and translate, we would be okay with that. Or like I certainly couldn't. My French is not that good. My daughter looks like she's going to be speaking French that well pretty soon now. Well, I think, luckily, the automated system has some plans for us. <sighs> I hope so. I was uh, doing I'm going to get a round brush. I'm now just giving up and getting out of the, the, the square brush. <laughs> just got to accept it's round time. You want some round brushness? And it's okay I, to change this is brush. A, yeah, it is. It, this is a number four round. And it's just going to give me a little bit of extra everything, really. Sometimes I have to dip it in water and kind of swirl it around to get the pigment amount load that I need going. As you do, I'm sure. So you were saying about the French and the automatic system and... Oh, yeah. They're checking it out right now. There's people suggesting try this and try, like, go in and see if the subtitles are working. Because I think sometimes... I, I always enable the subtitles and live subtitles. If there's subtitling that it will allow me to do, we I enable. will enable it. Yeah. And there's new little features coming. So, like, I, I can't hand caption every video. It's just not possible for me. Mm -hmm. But I do. I try to enable every captioning op opportunity that the system gives us. And we will continue to as yeah. we can. Because we think it's important. So just making sure that that's sort of traveling around the front. As you have. Oh, we've got kind of a nice, interesting little thing happening here as it is right now. Yeah. Little black, little brown, little black. Just didn't get enough the first time. And come here and talk a little bit about the band to the hat. So here we are, basic, 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 basic boy at basic moon. Got his little fedora on. Oh, he's got like, he's doing his little boy thing. That's fire code. All right. So I'll make a nice little step by step. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for being patient with me while I do those things. Now. Let's start getting all these details and things in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yellow and my black and make a very dark version of it. It's almost black. And then I'm going to take my vision enhancers. Get your frogs on, people. Doot, doot, doot. So here, right here in the center of the back is the suspender thingy. John probably knows what this little part's called because he's kind of a clothes horse in men's clothes. Uh, I don't believe it has any. I, I'm not aware of a name for the suspender But if part. there was one, you would be aware because you get like that. That's all I'm accusing you of. Well, I know what some parts of various bits of men's historic dress are. That's right. Way more than I do. So you are my resident expert. There we go. So we got some suspenders happening. All right. That's cute. Picking up at our suspenders. Got my little skin tone. 
I'm going to get a little blue into it even as I'm painting forward because that really helps it pull into the night. I'm going to come here. And on the far side, I'm kind of going to imply a little toe that way. Maybe a little bit of the curled toes downward this way. I'm just using the tip of my brush. To make some little tippy toes. Make some of them tippy toes. Getting a lot of that darker color. And let's come here and see how where I've got to blend those two edges. I kind of wiggle and tap the brush. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even at this point adding extra glazing medium to it. I'm just using that nature of it. I'm going to come under the toes here. Just kind of imply that. Let me even get some consider blue. We'll talk about the ankle right there. And a little darker shadow under the pants. And one kind of, see that right there? A little darker shadow right there at the back of the calf. Maybe one sort of right there. Now, when we have all those in, right, we've got our basic skin tone here. And I want to leave some of it for the rest of it, but I'm going to get some yellow into it this time. A lot of yellow. And it's quite bright. And I'm going to come and paint the top of the toes. And the front here with this very bright color. And let's put a bunch of this very bright color. A little bunch of strong, but some at the ankle here. Let's talk a little bit about the ankle. Might even grab some brighter, brighter. Right here. That's nice. Get back from that and see if I'm happy with that. If any part of it, you're like, man, I ain't feeling that one part. Don't, what you do, if you have to paint any back. So like, say I want to paint any back right here. I made my Prussian and my zinc, right? And I can just easily make a minor adjustment like that. Check that out. So you've got that. You can do that. Now, the hand. I'm going to start with this, the base skin tone. Base skin tone right here. All that in. I'm going to the pinky right here. I'm going to bring a little pinky out. I'm going to dip in water to improve the flow because this is one of those things where I think people who are used to the craft paint experience get a little frustrated with the heavy body paint experience. Now where I'm going to go forward facing on the fingers, you see I just went back into the blue. I'm going to shade these a bit because they bent down, didn't they? Blend out that highlight on the pinky that's too bright. Come in and start to shade. 
the arm. Definitely we want the shadow under here. Coming up. And we definitely, definitely want under the pinky bit of shadow and here at the side. Now I'm going to get a bunch of my light skin tone. I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight in front of the fingers that are bent forward to help define them. But it's not so strong that it's popping them out. Or you will be aggravated. You don't want to be aggravated. Adding that there. Those little digits are just happily being there. Come underneath here. Maybe again at the wrist a little bit. I'm just exaggerating those shadows. Just clean brush. I'm just softening that line. See how that went? I do. So there's that. Pretty happy with all that. I like it. Into the lightness. Right here. I might even get into this lightness for this. Where there's that slight hint of the yellow. Dip in water. Sure I've got it where I need it. Right here. For sure, we need one kind of coming right back there. Caught that little neck piece. And I'm going to add that little pop of highlight right there that implies the ear. I'm going to get a little more of my skin tone going. See, it's not that hard. It's the quinacridone and the yellow ochre. Now, just a little more yellow ochre. And then we get into those shadow colors with the skin tone. So see, now I've got a little bit of a face sort of peeking out. Yeah. I'm going to take some of my white and some of my yellow. I'm going to hit some of the forward facing edges of things with that. See where we got that there? It's really good. I'm going to take my black and my brown. I'm going to just hide, make it appear like there's a little bit of hair back here. So everybody understands that what we're dealing with is maybe a shadow. There we go. So I'm going to take a picture of that. Do we have any questions for this stage? This is the next stage to get to. All right. Let me go over here and take a look. I've been kind of multitasking, watching you doing some stuff. You can go over here and take a look at this. Why everyone has something to see while you're doing your thing. Kind of check that all out. Over here. Get that more centered. Good. There we go. Did you get your picture too? I did. I think I did. I always like to get a couple because then otherwise I got to do a bunch of photo editing to yeah, make it take work. Take some photo editing stuff. Yeah. No, there was here. There's some 
questions that were coming up here. Now, we've got a lot of videos, uh, and you talked about doing pricing mm -hmm. and things I'm gonna like I'm going to kind of fill this in right here while we're talking. You've got some links on the website. I, I've got, we've got some videos that you've done on that. Well, my mom and I did a video where we answered questions about pricing, being a professional artist, just things that you need to know. And it's on there. It's, it's ginger and cinnamon, and we talk about pricing. There are files in all my groups about my formula and how to price artwork and my explanation of how to decide where your price ranges are. That's a good question. Why the so, yellow highlights? Huh? Neil would like to know why the yellow highlights. Because it helps us translate that into a bright light that's haloing the skin. Ah. And yeah. just Chicken finishing meat. off these clouds. I thought you were going over there to get more paint. No, I'm just finishing off those clouds. Because you know me, I like my clouds. You do. I'm going to do a little bit of pants now. Isn't that exciting? Aren't you thrilled? I'm pants. thrilled. I'm going to take my black, my brown, and even perhaps a little bit of my Prussian. And we are definitely going to come underneath, and this is going to be quite dark. Right? Where our pants are is going to be quite dark. Notice I kind of pulled them up into the suspenders, too, so it gave that sense of, I pulled your pants forward, yo. Mm. This does have a little Tom Sawyer feel, too. To it. it does, doesn't it? I'm going to put some dark value here at the back of the knee and where the object is touching the brick. And it's kind of a totally Tom Sawyer thing to do, go hang out on the top of a building yeah, over a yeah. megaplex. Tom mega Sawyer were a city kid for sure. Or if there was a big weird building in the country, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it would be all about it. Not really, but you know. So I've got my basic mix, and to lighten it this time, I'm actually going to do something weird. I'm going to use yellow. I might even switch to yellow ochre. Yeah. So I don't want to use white yet because I want this to still feel like it's in the brown range. Mm. So let's come here and talk about the little folds that are happening in our pants. I have to listen. Get some brown highlights in there. Yeah, you're just trying to keep the pants brown, but a little bit of brown pants. I'm gonna wipe off, and I'm gonna put out some probably some more tinting white. And this highlight here, I'm going to take it to the tinting light. And you can see what I mean. It doesn't, if I go into the titanium, it makes it a cream or parchment. This lets it stay the color I mixed. A little highlight there. All right. And then say another little one here. I like that quite a lot. It's just a nice little pant. Now let's do our shirt. So our shirt was our yellow, a little bit of our black. That was a base color. We're going to put in some shadows, though, and I'm going to go ahead and get the Prussian into that. See that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to use my tinting white to lighten it a bit. And a couple of spaces here. Give me just sort of wiggling some wrinkles. Some values of some deep shadow wrinkles.
right there under the hat. There we go. Catching it under the armpit here, catching it at the back where we're starting to talk about that some of this, while in that color range, might be also in shadow. Man, those shadow values really brought that, the value just brought that painting to life. It just brings it to life. All right, so now I've got this color here, and I'm going to go ahead and get a very light version of it, right, using my titanium white. So then I can come in and talk right there. There's a little highlight. You know, maybe perhaps on the back. We see just a few... And let's definitely put some right here. So now we're capturing a little bit of that moonlight. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe get back into my, like a little half mix between my tinting white and my titanium white. So that we can, you know, maybe talk about some of the wrinkles that are on the shirt back here. He's a little ruffled. A little ruffled. A little bit. Not, not terribly. Let's finish off those suspenders, which is going to definitely be the titanium white. Probably going to have to put out some more titanium white. I'll just use my fluid for now <laughs> since yep. it's right here. So that's what I mean, like you can use. Get a little bit of my impression, and I'm coming here where there's folds or just something I want to make sure is defined from the background. With just my impression. And then I may go ahead and get into my tint a little bit. And then on the back here, where maybe it would have gotten a little bit more in shadow, I'm going to go ahead and knock that back into shadow. But now we have some somewhat distinctive Bits of kit, right? Yep. You can put a little highlight on there. I'll take a little of my yellow. Get into my white, highlight the shoulder a bit, front of the suspender. And 
interestingly enough, go ahead and come to the back of the shirt. And I'm going to take this very lightly around, just barely showing to show like some of the highlight that would be showing around some of these other objects. Hmm. Okay, it is picture time again. Picture time. Picture time again. We're nearly done. Like, seriously. It's crazy. Now, sometimes, uh, are, are, you, are you finding, um, you're working on a canvas today, or an actual Yeah, I'm actual working on an actual canvas, canvas today. Is, is it requiring different pressure from your brushes than normal? No, but what is different is it springs back, and so my, I'm less fatigued in my workspace. Interesting. So that's always nice. The lack of fatiguing. Mm. Oh, are you guys just delighted? Is this going to a little boy in your life? It is yeah. definitely going to a little boy in my life. The gonk droid himself. <laughs> <laughs> just love it. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little of my black over to my yellow ochre. And I'll go ahead and start just getting into my titanium white. Which you can see has got a very strong tinting strength. Now, the opening of this hat kind of comes down like this. It has a little rise like that. And so I'm just trying to sort of fill in some of what's going on. You made his suspenders pop and didn't even get sent to the principal's office. I did. I um, probably popped him a little bit hard, but it's a painting, so you want to pop things. No, Exaggerate you want the world. Exaggerate the world. Now I'm going to get into just my black, which you see creates one type of shadow. And at the back of the hat, coming forward. Oh, they were asking if you're planning on putting the little cityscape in below. Well, no, because remember we answered that earlier. I didn't want to do city. Okay, they were just asking again. Yeah. Someone was asking, "He's like, hey, are you not going to paint in the little cityscape?" No, I'm not going to do the cityscape. That's not a. It... it isn't the story I wanted to tell with this one. I wanted it to be a little less man, you know, world of man, a little more fairy tale. Well, I mean, because. If he was looking up at the sky in an urban area, chances are he would be seeing Starlink and not stars. Yeah. <laughs> There's I mean, a lot. Just... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of reasons. A lot. So I'm going to get a little more white into that mix. I'm going to paint a little highlight kind of where the hat divots in. Okay, a little bit down the back. Let's get a little shadow going of the shadow in the hat. And that kind of comes around like that. So see how now we're starting to see some shape of his hat. Yeah. Not a perfect shape of hat, but definitely hat shape. Oh, no. You can totally tell he has a fedor eye on. And you know. A brimmed hat. He does have a brimmed hat. around and kind of capture that shape first. Now, if you're looking for and then painting... I'm gonna... hmm? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to add another little shadow color. 
I was going to say, if you're looking for the different paintings that we have taught, if you go to our website, theartsherpa.com, and click on videos, you'll find a whole, all of them listed with a search function. They're organized by difficulty, one, two, and three, hoot. Big art quest. You'll see there's a watercolors, holidays, landscapes, girls. We've got some of those pre-organized with buttons at the top, but you can just search for anything out there you might want. Those are just uh, it's a good way to find other resources that we have available for you. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it works pretty well. It's been a good resource. A little of this with a bit of the yellow on it. I don't even mind plugging it. W you don't even mind plugging it? TheArtSherpa.com. The place for all of your painting lessons. Over 700 of them, I think. Yeah, I think that's where we're at now. Seven hundred. There's many hundreds of them. There are many. I'm many just catching hundreds. little highlights where I think there would be. I kind of over brimmed, and it's real simple to fix that. You just come back in. <laughs> you over brimmed. <laughs> He's turning into a bowler. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't round the top. Don't round the top. You're getting into pork pie territory. I don't think I am, and you need to stop before you give me a panic attack and I stop painting. <laughs> this isn't a subtle suggestion. It is a command. <laughs> You're putting the shading in there? Yeah, I think just a little bit more shading, you know, that we might have. Just exaggerate some of those forms and shapes and things. Hmm. This is coming together really fast. Yeah. So, let's take our last picture. Well, I can do that actually after because I will be signing it now. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> woo! You did it. How? Do, well, uh, like I did it. That's cool. But you did it. That's a big deal. So if you did do it and you're super proud of it. You can hashtag it, the Art Sherpa, and throw it up on Instagram. You can come and share with us in a private group if you're nervous about sharing it on Facebook. You can share it on the website. You can put it like literally in the comments uh, under this video. I'm on Pinterest anywhere you are if you want to show me. This is great. I absolutely love seeing it. I'm even on Twitter, like pretty rarely. I'm not good at Twitter, but I don't <laughs> do anything obnoxious on Twitter. Your tweeting skills are not on Twitter. Yeah, but. On that tweet. said, they're also not stressful. So they're low. Now, low because tweet. I have this lovely deep stretched canvas. Ooh, deep stretched. That's I'm cool. gonna fix this right here. What'd you do? Oh, I just gotta. Are you putting some building in? Just making sure that the painting goes around a bit more. This was a really fun painting. There you go. I'm, I didn't even paint it, and I'm proud of it. You didn't even paint it, and you're proud of it? I think it looks great. I will make sure that the exact set of brushes is listed right after the show. Um, you can find these in all the places that do brushes. <laughs> but I'm sure our community has some suggestions of their favorite place to buy brushes, and they're always welcome to share those. That's awesome. You're doing it. You're signing it on the side. This is a... Sherpa turn. Da -da -da. Well, it's signed, but the painting itself is left with its integrity there. Oh, Let's go forward. You can look at the palette and we'll turn around. Okay. Palette. Okay, there we go. And then Shh. let me move this. Aha! Ah, so there he is. There you go. Now you can do this because it's a square. I like to do the squares. You know why? Because they're really easy to resize. So if you want to size up big, and you wanted to do this on a 48 by 48, you could do that. Yeah. And I did give you guys a link on the website on easy ways to do that, even with the traceable. So that should really help you. I cannot wait to see your version versions of this. Mm. I hope you're having a fantastic Saturday. 
Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Be really happy. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.